Sam Melnick, VP of Marketing over at Alcadia, and I want to thank you all for being here today. So today's webinar is how a global CMO empowers his team with data. So this is actually part of a three-part webinar series called Designing the Marketer's Data Set for Better Execution. So before we dig in, I want to do a little bit of housekeeping. First, if you have any questions, we'll allot time at the end to chat with Tamir. So just pop them in the GoToMeeting app below. Uh, similarly, if you're having any tech technical difficulties, just scan, toss it into that GoToMeeting app, and our team on the back end will make sure to answer and help you out. Uh, the webinar will be recorded, and you will get the slides afterwards, so feel free to sit back and enjoy the webinar. Um, if you want to go to the next slide, Tamir, that would be fabulous. So again, Sam Melnick, Vice President of Marketing at Alcadia been with Alcadia for almost four years now, former IDC analyst. And before I have Tamir pop in, I just wanted to say a couple things about how excited I am to kick off this series uh, with a senior marketing executive like Tamir. Uh, I met him actually on the trade show of a conference, I don't know, it might have been a year ago, and immediately he launched into the value we saw in the marketing performance management project he and his team had taken have taken on, and then all the great things they're doing with their technology stack. And we really got talking about this. And as I said, I think it's been almost a year, but here we are, we're finally on a webinar, we're finally able to tell this story and partner with Tamir, so I'm really pumped. Tamir, do you wanna just quickly say hello to the audience so they know your voice, and then we'll keep pushing on. Yeah, thank you, Sam. So good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are. Looking forward to sharing my journey um, as a Chief Marketing Officer for Quadiant. Uh, so I want to thank Sam and the rest of the Allocadia team for the invite and for giving me an opportunity to share my experience in the journey. Great. Uh, if you go to the next slide, then if everyone, as you're watching, feel free to join on in social, hashtag MOPS webinar, or we'll be tweeting at Allocadia. Uh, we'll hand it over to, me, to Tamir in a moment, but these next two slides that we're gonna go ahead. I just wanna give a little bit of perspective on Alcadia and our view of the world, and it plays into what Tamir will be talking about. So the way we look at the world here at Alcadia, and when we talk with our customers and CMOs like Tamir, we talk about this a lot. But the idea is there's these two roles that marketers and marketing organizations have. So on the one side, you have the doing of marketing. So that's all the things that are happening in market. It's everything a customer sees. It's events. It's webinars, it's advertisements. Again, it's almost execution. It's what the customer sees and touches. A lot of efforts focused there. Much of the technology stacks focused there. I think at one point we surveyed uh, surveyed uh, the one a marketing conference and two thirds of technologies were actually on the do side. Uh, the other side, that's the running of marketing, or that's really the strategy, or what goes on behind the scenes. It's the creating of your plans, the managing of budgets and investments. Ultimately, it's connecting that data source with all those do marketing or execution data sources. Then it's bringing it all together to measure and then optimize those plans and those investments and those budgets. Uh, if you go to the next slide, Tamir, you'll see that Alcadia firmly plays in that running of marketing side. Tamir will talk about a couple of technologies that both complement the running of marketing and then some of the technologies like a Salesforce that sit on the doing of marketing. But when we look at this, we firmly believe that there is as much if not more importance needed to be put on the running of your marketing, running of your marketing organization as the doing or the execution. So equal efforts on strategy as there is on execution. So with that, I want to hand it over to Tamir, told you it'd be quick, my, my portion, and let him walk through his story of how his team took on a project like this. Great. Thanks again, Sam. And uh, once again, good morning, good afternoon to everyone on the call. Uh, I promise to try to keep this educational and informative as possible. Um, as Sam said in the beginning of, of the webinar, that if you do have questions for me, please type them into the uh, GoToMeeting panel and we will answer them at the end. So uh, just a brief overview of who Quantine is. So we are an enterprise software company focused on uh, the Fortune 500, so enterprise software market. Uh, focused on the financial services, insurance, and healthcare markets in particular, so highly regulated industries that have a requirement to deliver communications to their customers. So if you think about all the documentation that you have with your bank, with your investment company, with your insurance company, 
uh, quantine is typically the backbone that delivers that communication. So if you think about a statement, for example, where you have your the bank logo on the top left hand side, in the middle you have your contact information, and then you have all the list of the transactions for that cycle. Quantine is a software that runs behind the scenes that delivers that piece of communication, whether obviously it's print or obviously today with uh, with the digital delivery via mobile, tablet, or your computer. And thanks to our wonderful customers, uh, we've been recognized as a leader by the analysts. So if you're familiar with Gartner, Forrester, IDC, all those analyst firms recognize uh, Quantian as a leading uh, uh, supplier in that market. Uh, we've celebrated our 25 year anniversary. We were formed as a GMC software and uh, we rebranded to Quanti in 2017, which I drove and I'll talk about that uh, in the next uh, 10 minutes. From a customer base, we have 1,800 customers worldwide, uh, an amazing team of over 1,000 employees uh, worldwide. Uh, we have offices in pretty much every single major uh, city that you could think of across North America, South America, obviously Europe, and across Asia Pacific, including China, uh, Singapore, and Australia. And from, uh, from an organization perspective, we are part of a, the Neopost organization. So Neopost is a publicly traded company in France, about 1.3 billion euro company, uh, publicly traded, and we are part of the Neopost uh, family. I joined Quantian in 2014, specifically November of 2014. And what I'd love to do for the next 25 to 30 minutes is really share my journey and experience as a CMO. Um, and talk about how Allocadia helped me, um, in fact, uh, was, a, was a core foundation uh, to the work that the team has done in the last three to four years. So with that said, obviously every CMO has a number of goals, right? Some of those goals are obviously very customer driven, right? Understanding the, your customer, understanding the customer journey, the customer experience. Then you obviously need to understand the markets that you play in. Uh, any adjacent markets or any markets that, that you want to enter or, or maybe not enter and, and divest in, um, specifically from a product portfolio, what does a product mix look like and what is the value proposition that the product offering has to, to the customers. So those are all obviously very good goals, but there's another goal that, that sometimes are, is not explicitly mentioned that Sam talked about in the beginning, and that's the ability to really track our investments and track the spending. A lot of companies see marketing as a cost center, right? As a department that is a necessary evil or as a way of, of, of spending uh, profit or operating cash. Uh, but the goal for the CMO is to really be able to track the investment. And as we know is that for, uh, for a marketing team, you obviously have a mixture of different marketing specialists and generalists and uh, marketing teams that are dedicated to demand generation. Right. The idea is to making sure that you empower the team that you hire. Right. Give them the ability to decide where to invest. Right. And at the end of the day, right, the CMO needs to share the same objectives as the head of sales or the chief revenue officer. Right. So the idea behind the CMO is to making sure that every dollar, every euro, every Swiss franc, pick your currency, that when we invest it, we invest it wisely. Right. And at the end of the day, our job is to really grow the business. Right. And how do you achieve that? So behind every leader, there's obviously a, a team. Right. And uh, every leader will tell you that the team is, is essential to making the organization work, to make the organization successful, to make uh, to make everything work. Um, so the idea behind having a great team is you need an amazing culture. Um, there's a lot of emphasis in terms of employee experience and making sure that the employee has the culture to make decisions, the culture to move fast, uh, the, the, also the ability to do things very easily and to be very efficient, right? Thanks to our, our mobile devices and tablets and the digital workplace, right? Employees expect that same experience that they have on their mobile devices when they come to the office. They, they expect things to be automated, but they also expect to make decisions and to have an amazing experience, not just for themselves, but for the team. So when you deliver an amazing experience for the team, um, you find that the individuals step up, everyone steps up, but they also tend to work together at, better as a team when everyone has uh, the same experience and, and hopefully it's, uh, it's a very positive experience. So with that said, moving to the next slide, just in terms of the journey, 
Um, so here are the, the five steps that I'll walk you through in terms of when I started with Quadiant back in November of 2014 to where we are today. Um, and as you could imagine, um, when I joined uh, the company, and at the time the company was still branded as GMC, uh, the company just celebrated the 20 year anniversary. In fact, I just missed it by a couple months uh, where the organization um, had a, a great set of products, amazing customer base. They were just pretty much acquired from, uh, from Neopost. And, um, and joining the company, there was just several roadblocks. So the company hired me to elevate their marketing organization marketing processes. So one of the first things that I've noticed in my first 30 days is that I had really zero visibility in terms of where we're spending our money, in terms of what have we spent on, what do we receive from that spend, um, and then understanding from the, the connection where Sam showed in terms of connecting the execution with the planning, it was just impossible for me to see where we were spending. And when we were going through our planning meetings for 2015, I had no visibility, I had no data to go into the leadership team, to the board of directors to say, this is where we need to take marketing for the next three years, right? And without that data, without having visibility, it was very hard for me to say, what did the company do for the last 20 years in terms of marketing budget, right? Surely they had spreadsheets, right? And that's the second point in terms of marketing budget. So the company definitely had a marketing budget and the company definitely were doing marketing activities, but it was really disjointed. Um, several people had different um, spreadsheets. The spreadsheets were on their local laptops. I would ask for one budget, get something from one marketing person, and then another marketing person had a different budget and different numbers. I'd go to finance and they had a completely, totally different number. Um, and then when you had the meetings, as, as any leaders when they first joined, um, one of the things I, I sense is just frustration from the team in terms of, you know, I have to update these two spreadsheets. I don't know what the actuals are versus what I was given. I don't know exactly how much money we spent on this product versus that product or versus this market versus that market. So, so from a, from a marketing experience, um, it, just, it just was really bad and people were frustrated. And from my seat, I was even more frustrated because I had no visibility in terms of what the team has done um, uh, in the past, right? And then in addition to that, from, uh, from an execution perspective, there was really no correlation to say that we spent X amount on a specific campaign and received this amount of results. And that really drove me, uh, drove me crazy. So moving to the next slide in terms of uh, the tipping point. Um, and this is actually very, um, uh, <laughs> very uh, um, detailed in terms of exactly what happened. So uh, the first one is it was very clear that we had very uh, aggressive growth plans. So, and this is all public information. So you could go back to the annual report of 2015 for Neopost that they said that GMC software was our growth engine and we're expecting double digit uh, uh, between 25 to 27% growth for, for, for GMC software. So not only was it just internal growth plans, right? It was also externalized and made public. And what that does is that obviously puts a lot of pressure on the leadership team, but also uh, gives us the ability to ask for investment, right? If there's an expectation for the company to grow at an X amount, right? There needs to be a uh, level of investment. Now that investment comes in many different ways, right? Investment comes in obviously hiring more people. Investment comes in hiring salespeople. Investment comes in doing more programs or more campaigns. Investment, I'm bringing tools so we could properly scale the organization. So, so when I say investment, I know sometimes we automatically think, oh, more money for campaigns. The investment comes in so many different uh, shapes and forms that, that it was imperative that we, we had that um, but what, what really was important was the track record that marketing had before I joined. So marketing was not really seen as a strategic function. Um, it was quite difficult to, to get that investment from marketing. So uh, I remember uh, distinctly having conversations where they said, okay, we have X amount of money. This is where we should spend it. I said, wait, we should spend it on marketing. And here's where we need to spend it on marketing. And the thing that I, I told our CFO at the time, which, which still resonates, right, is that, sure, we did 
marketing campaigns. Sure, we do trade shows. Sure, we do webinars and we do SEO campaigns and we, 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 we spend money on different types of activities and programs. Not everything is going to be great. Not everything is going to yield results. Not everything is going to bring pipeline or, or demand generation or, or generate demand, right? But what's really important is that we set up a process. We have tools that could absolutely measure what we've done. Right, and making sure that we understand that not everything is going to be perfect. Uh, but what's important is that when it's not perfect, we'll know that it's not perfect. And things that are perfect and things that are well, we know about that, so we can repeat them and uh, and optimize them in the future. So what I did was I put a lot of emphasis in terms of marketing operations and putting dashboards and reports. Um, this was a way for me to build credibility right out of the gate. So three months on the, on the job is to prove to the CFO, prove to our CEO and the Neopost uh, board is to say, these are the processes and tools that I'm putting in place. So when I do have that investment and when you grant me the additional headcount and additional money, right, this is how I know what's, uh, what's uh, going to be delivered. So what I did was I put together some, some dashboards and what you see here is actual screenshots from the presentation I did in Q1 of 2015, right? So they're still branded as GMC, apologies for that, but I wanted to show exactly what I showed uh, the, the CFO and the executive team is this is how we're going to measure uh, campaigns and measure our investment moving forward. So there's two different dashboards, right? So I'll cover the, the, the left one first in terms of the different regions. So at the time, GMC software was broken down into three distinct regions. We had the Americas region, which includes North America and South America, uh, EMEA, which is our European and Middle East region, and then the third region, APAC, is our Asia Pacific. So that includes obviously Asia, but also includes uh, Australia and New Zealand. And since we're in the enterprise software business, our sales cycles can be anywhere from nine to 24 months. So meaning if we do a campaign today, we might not see revenue for that campaign for another nine to 24 months, even sometimes longer, depending on the size of the company and the size of the opportunity. So we have an eight stage sales process where we track the opportunities based on stage, right? And I don't know if you can see on the bottom where we have stage one, which is research, stage two is developing, stage three is validation, et cetera, et cetera. And we measure the pipeline based on all those different types of stages. And what the first thing I did was track the, the opportunities in the pipeline by source. So on the left-hand side, hopefully you can see it on your screen, we have the three sources. We have marketing which was a brand new source for the team. We have partners because we have a pretty big channel team. Um, and then obviously we have our sales team um, that, that's generating opportunities. So the first thing I proved with the, with the, with the uh, dashboard on the left is that the ability to track pipeline by stage. The, the, moving to the right-hand side, the right dashboard, right, is a completely different view. It's looking at the specific programs and campaigns that we're investing in. So you have your typical lead funnel, right? Which is boring by now, right? But at the time it was a new concept that was brought into the company. But on top you have lead generation by source, right? So I could check all the different sources of what's working, what's not working, um, what, what's, uh, what's delivering results. And this is all done by, by the region. So this gave the team, uh, spe specifically the CFO, the CEO and the board, assurance that I have a process in place and I have measurements uh, uh, tracking, which obviously uh, super important. When I moved to the next slide in terms of um, presenting, I was I was kind of given the green light, right? I, I, I presented the, the, um, the goals. I presented a, a really detailed plan that with this amount of investment, this is what we're expecting to get. Um, and, and put specific KPIs that were going to be measured at the time monthly um, and, and then also some quarterly objectives uh, to assure the team that we are watching what we're doing, uh, that we're not recklessly spending money and that we're taking the investment really seriously. Um, and with that, that really had to change how we operated as a team. So one of the things that was, was clear is that to the team is that we're going to be measured on pipeline contribution. So my message to the marketing team was, hey, guess what? Now it's all about pipeline and opportunity generation. 
And a couple of people on the team were very uncomfortable with it. Uh, one person raised her hand and she said, this is not really for me. And, and she left the organization. Um, a couple of people just said, this is not what we are accustomed to. And this is not, you know, we're not in sales, so we're not signing up for a quota. And, you know, my response is, I understand that we're not in sales. However, we're getting a huge amount of investment. We have to be held accountable for that investment. So we really need to change how we ran marketing, uh, which, uh, which uh, if you've ever been through a change management, it's, it's not so easy. So in terms of the solution and, and uh, where Allocadia uh, fit in. So in 2015, um, I looked at the tools that we had in, in place and we had some pretty big tools. We had an ERP system from one of the top leading ERP vendors in the world. Uh, we also had a separate system uh, for budgeting, uh, probably also one of the leaders, uh, certainly one of the leaders in terms of budgeting. So we had two different solutions internally um, that, that uh, helped with the budgeting and helped with financial tracking. In addition to that, we also had Excel, my favorite, just a little sarcasm there, right? So we, so, so in house, we really had three different competing ways of how to start tracking our spend, planning our spend, and tracking our spend. So after doing some research, um, talking to the analysts, and 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 really coming to a conclusion that the three options we had: Excel, a major ERP solution, and a major financial planning and budgeting system, were not the way the, the, the solutions. We looked at Allocadia as a, as a solution as and as a, a way of helping us plan our our marketing spend. So Allocadia really became the foundation, one of our core systems in terms of how we are spending our money. So it's not necessarily in terms of um, why we're spending it, and we and we are, we'll get there in a minute. But in terms of where are we spending and how are we spending the money? And the, the key thing that I focused on in the first year is really giving the team the ability to plan their marketing um, schedule and their marketing campaigns and their marketing strategy, right? And also be able to report on their investments. So we put a cadence in place every quarterly that we do a review of the region, right? So we'll look at each region and say, okay, you spent X amount. What did that deliver to the business? And it was all black and white. If it wasn't in, in our CRM system, if it wasn't in Allocadia, it didn't happen. The other thing that was really cool about Allocadia and about the, system, the process that we put in place is that they don't get budget unless the money is in, uh, unless it's in Allocadia. So, so whenever they plan and uh, commit to a specific marketing program, it has to be in Allocadia. Otherwise, the, the invoice doesn't get processed, the campaign does not get created in our CRM system, right? So, so it, it forced a, a, a way of working and forced the way the team really changed. And what that does is, and and, you have, and I had to sell the benefits to this, right? Because no one really likes governance. No one likes the big brother. But what I did was I really emphasized that you have complete control of how you spend your money. You know your objectives. You know your investment. Make it happen, right? And And be responsible, right? And it's okay to make a mistake. It's okay that if a campaign doesn't deliver anything. Just as long as you're willing to stand up at the quarterly cadence meeting and say, hey, we did this campaign and it was a total flop, but these were the two or three things we learned from it. So what that did was that put and instilled this concept of responsibility into the organization. And as you can imagine, when you're tracking all the different investments and you'll be able to report on that and be able to link that to the execution as Sam had in the beginning of the presentation, you're easily able to justify additional and future investment. So it made my job easier. I'm not gonna say much easier, uh, right? But made my job easier when I went to the board and said, listen, 2015, this is what we spent. This is what we got. Here's the investment that we we're making in 2016. And here's what we expect. And a year from now, you could hold me accountable for that investment. So once you hear that, right, people were able to, to say, okay, they got it. They 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 get they get it that they that with a certain amount of investment, there has to be some type of responsibility and accountability. And the thing we learned during this entire journey, which I'll talk about in a few minutes, is in terms of be able to automate as much as you can, right? As as we all know, there's a lot of different marketing systems and tools, right? I can't keep track of how many Martech vendors are out, out there, but the goal is and the idea is to make the marketers experience amazing. 
right? And you do that by automating and synchronizing Allocadia and your systems together. So in the background, right, instead of making the user click on things or making the user do things, right, you could you could automate and synchronize uh, to make the experience much better. And not only much better, but you also have one source of the truth in terms of data where if you're manually entering data and you're copying and pasting, there's obviously uh, room for error. Here is um, a screenshot of, of my dashboard. So we've used um, uh, Allocadia to manage the rebrand from GMC software to Quantium. Um, so we put in a specific budget for that because that had specific funds and specific investments and we're able to track where and how we're spending for the budgeting. But this is the dashboard that I use on a regular basis. I probably want to say two or three times a week um, in terms of how we're spending money. And I, I just want to highlight in terms of where I keep track of our investments and why this is such a powerful process. So obviously I could track by year, so I could go and, and look at the different years. Um, in terms of budget name, so we are a very distributed team and I'll talk about that. I think I have a slide on that in terms of the distributed team, but the team is really spread across the globe, across different currencies. So where you see budget name, I could go in and look at specific budgets in terms of where they are, in terms of what they spent. I can obviously look at quarters. So what I look at when I uh, for a marketing plan and for a marketing strategy is to do even spending, not necessarily front load the the, the marketing plan or or spend a lot of it in Q4. Right, I look for an even distributed spend. But in conversations with my CFO, I could go into and say, let me see what we spent in Q2, and I can see what's planned for Q4 just in case if we need to do any type of adjustments. Um, category, and I left this one expanded just so you can see some of the examples that I track. So I wanna track um, our investment with analyst relations, with campaign support, any computer or software that we have to buy as an organization, any type of content syndication, customer marketing. So these are categories that I'm able to drill down and say, how much money are we spending on digital marketing or an SEO? Uh, for me, digital is too broad, right? But how much are we spending with LinkedIn or with um, trade shows? So I'm able to really drill down into the specific categories. The next two items are key. And this is this is really has helped me and the business. So first is the business segment. So we, could, we, we target different um, verticals. So we target the financial services market, the insurance industry, the healthcare industry, and now some other uh, industries. I could go in here and see how much are we investing based on the business segment. So when the sales leader for financial services come and said, hey, I heard the insurance segment is getting more funding, I could go in and really quickly answer his or her uh, objection or, or, or statement, right? And it was support or, or not support, right? And I, once again, I look at different segments um, some new segments, we may want to increase our investment because it's new to the company. And then the last one is the product, which is pretty cool. So if there's specific campaigns for a new product release or for a specific product line, I could look at the at what that, that investment is. And then we also have additional dashboards and additional reporting that we do for end of the year. So for example, in terms of conversions, et cetera. So this is the dashboard that I use uh, on a regular basis. And let's talk about the benefits and, and what results the organization has seen as a result of, of it. So there's three of them. Um, the first one is really be able to justify the additional investment. As I said in the beginning of the presentation, right, the additional investment comes in many different shapes and forms, right? Um, one which I think is, is, a, is a good one is headcount. So when I joined in 2014, the marketing team was 11 strong. Uh, today, we are at 43 people. So if you do the math, you could easily see how big we've grown as a marketing organization and as a company. And using Allocadia and using the processes that we put in place and having an amazing team, right? So you can have the best tool, but not a great team, or you can have a great team and not an amazing tool, but having the combination of a great team, a great process with tools, right? And the discipline and culture, you're able to justify the budget and the increased investment, whether the investment comes in headcount or comes in programs. So that's the first uh, major benefit. Second one I think is, is, is one that I really take close to, to heart is really empowering the team. Um, we hire, my philosophy is that we hire people to, for them to tell us what to do. 
I don't want to hire someone and say, this is what we need to do. Um, there's a reason why everyone in the quantity marketing team has a role in our team, in our, in our organization, is because they're here for a reason. They have specific experience. They have a specifically um, a skill set. They come from a different point of view. And the idea is to really empower each individual to making a decision and pretty much owning their own business. And that's what I say all the time is that this is your business. You have a million euros next year. How do you want to spend it? These are the KPIs that we're going to track you at. So, so there will be accountability, right? But, but you're empowered to come in and make decisions. And one slogan that I say that some of the team members now roll their eyes, right, kiddingly, is make a new mistake today. I encourage the team to make a mistake. Um, in fact, my first year, 2015, I gave away an iPad to the number one mistake of the year, right? Because I want to encourage people to innovate and to make decisions and feel like they have the right and uh, to make a mistake and have a right to make a campaign fail. And that's a new concept that was at the time with, within the organization. And I know from, you know, from recruiting and from uh, increasing the marketing team, that's a new philosophy that people have not really been accustomed to. So that was really the, the, uh, the, the second benefit. And then the third benefit is in terms of um, the, uh, the innovation and the accountability. So, so as I mentioned, that, that people know what their budget is, right? They know that they're being tracked, right? They don't see it as big brother. I promise you that. They feel this as a way of being empowered and driving innovation. And what that does at the end of the day is it really encourages people to be smart on how they invest and also be responsible, right? And have some accountability, not just to the team, um, not just to their region, but to the overall organization. And that's what brings the third one is the accountability. It's the culture of, of having that freedom, but also being accountable for what you do and being accountable for your ideas. Right. And the, and the goal here, and here's a screenshot from our CRM system where you have two sections on our campaign on every campaign. So every campaign has a planning and has a campaign statistic. So this is almost like what Sam was saying in terms of planning and execution, almost very similar. If you look at the, the parallels of that. So from a planning, you have the dates. Right. You have um, budgeted cost, which is being driven directly from Allocadia. So the, the, the person does not need to manually type that in um, and the actual cost. So this specific campaign came really under budget. I don't know why, but it did. Um, I think I, I have to look at the details, but it did come under under budget. And once again, those are coming directly from Allocadia. On the right hand side on top, you have the expected increase, expected opportunities. Right. And this is what the person puts in before the, the, the campaign is executed. Right. So in this case, the person managing and owning this specific program said we're going to get 30 inquiries and I'm expecting six of those inquiries to turn into opportunities. OK. Now when you look at the bottom hand side, you have the campaign statistics. So inquiries blew it out of the park. Right. Uh, where we expected 30, we got 176. Marketing qualified leads. So we use um, acronyms that I think most marketing people are familiar from, I think, is serious decisions where you have MQL, marketing qualified leads, you have sales accepted leads. Um, and then automatically we calculate the cost per inquiry, per MQL, per SAL, per, per uh, one. And then if you look on the right hand side, you can see the opportunities that was created and sourced from this campaign. So in this case, right, we spent uh, about 13, 14,000. Um, euros right and that resulted in 625,000 of opportunity in uh that's a, a value uh, that's accepted that sales owns right so so from my perspective it's it seems like a pretty successful campaign right we have uh we have spent uh, about 14k and and there's about 625k i assure you there's campaigns that have value one opportunities as well um i just grabbed one out of the blue that uh for, for the for the presentation so from a from a implementation and a deployment, the team is a, a sincerely a global team in multiple currencies. Uh, so we have a team in uh, Canada, in Toronto, in uh, across the U.S. Uh, we also have uh, someone in Mexico City. Going over the pond in terms of uh, Europe, we have in the in the country, countries and cities that you can expect. So we have London, Paris um uh zurich um uh, uh, uh munich 
uh, across all the major cities. And then in, in Asia, uh, we have uh, in Shanghai, Singapore, and Australia. So certainly uh, a global team, uh, multiple currencies, as you can expect, multiple um, um, sales teams, right? So different personalities and different maturity in terms of market um, maturity in terms of uh, go-to-market strategy. So, so what Allocadia does is it allows us to really plan for a global go-to-market strategy, but execute and plan for that locally to be uh, done locally. So moving to the next slide, just in terms of the future, right? I wish I could take credit for this line, uh, but it's one that I use um, and, it, and it comes from uh, our favorite um, superhero, maybe not our favorite superhero, depending on uh, which side of the comic books world you live in, right? But um, the, the message to the team is that you have a lot of flexibility. You have a lot of power uh, because you're spending money, right? And it's a lot of money and it's an investment. So with that power and with that ability, and, and if you want to keep that flexibility and, and be able to be agile and be able to try new things and, and be able to really grow the business, right? It comes with, with responsibilities. So it's not Big Brother watching you at all, right? It's quite the opposite. It's, it's, it's empowering the team to really make decisions and, and act locally. So in terms of where we are today, um, so one of the things that is important for, as a CMO is linking the, the marketing's goals and objectives to the corporate strategy. So obviously every company has a strategy, every company should have goals, right? I do my best is to link my goals and the team's goals to the corporate goals. So any strategy buckets that we have, we're starting to link our investments and campaigns to the three or five different buckets that we have. My suggestion is to automate as much as you can. Um, not only does this improve the experience of the team and of the systems, but it also makes things more efficient and more accurate because you're working with the single source of data. Speaking of data, uh, I think the slogan today is that data is the new oil. Um, now that using Alcadia for three years, for a good three years, I have a great sense of data that makes my planning so much easier and my messaging so much more powerful. I know the conversion rates. I know in terms of what programs are trending and why they're trending or where they're trending. I'm able to say this is where we need to invest in our new products or where we need to divest, right? So, so for certain products, we might not want to invest as much as we did three years ago just because of the product maturity and product life cycle. Um, vendor negotiation, this is a cool one, right? So if there's a vendor that you continue doing business with, right, do a report and say, how much money am I spending with a specific vendor? And I just recently did this with one of our analyst firms is saying, you know, with the renewal coming up, I said, you know, how much money have we spent with the analyst firm across all the different programs and research and, and strategy days and you get an amount and now you're able to negotiate better with, with the vendors. Right, or be able to see uh, which vendors are, are taking more of your money. And then I can assure you that when you have a right process and right tools, right, the team and as individuals and as a team, right, they have more power and more flexibility and freedom to learn. Right? You're, giving, you're giving employees and, and your, your team the opportunity to learn um, as well as grow both personally and professionally. So I think this is one of my last slides in terms of just a summary in terms of the journey. So the first year was really focused in terms of aligning budgets with uh, the investments that we received from, from Neopost and from uh, the board of directors, right? So the idea is we get X amount of money. This is how we're planning to spend the money. We're planning to spend it on tools, on people, on programs, on everything, right? Um, so, and, and getting the teams realizing that they have to be able to track um, their, their budget. Next is really about making things more automatic and connecting Allocadia to the court ERP and court CRM system. So a lot of work done in the back end to automate as much as you can to make that experience much better. And then when you have those in, in place, right, is really having the culture of empowering the marketing team, right? Empowering them to make decisions, empowering them to plan for the year, empowering them to be able to report on a quarterly basis in terms of the results. And I can tell you when you, when you attend those cadence quarterly reports, you actually see people really happy 
that they have that freedom, right? They're happy that they're empowered and happy to present the results to the executive team. They really do feel like they're empowered. Um, sometimes when campaigns don't uh, deliver, I could just tell by their face they're sometimes disappointed. But when they say things like, we tried this type of trade show and the trade show was a total bust. We spent 10,000 euros in Las Vegas. Yeah, it was a great time. We all had beer at the bar, right? But delivered nothing. So guess what? We're not doing that again. And this is what we learned is that it's the wrong audience. It's the wrong time of the year, whatever it is, right? And then obviously moving forward in terms of optimization, there's always uh, opportunity to optimize, right? In terms of uh, being able to make more dashboards and be able to do uh, better reporting. So with that said, I think this is my last slide before I hand it back to Sam and the Allocadia team, um, is that I could tell you, right? Is that with empowerment, uh, it's so important because that's what, people are looking for uh, when they join an organization. And when you have that across the business, right, it really helps the company grow. So with that said, I wanna thank you very much for your attention. Uh, again, if you have questions, you can type them into the GoToMeeting and I'll be happy to answer any specific questions you have on any of the content or my experience. Thank you, Sam, over to you. Awesome, thank you, Tamir, that was fabulous. I just slacked someone on my team and said, uh, Tamir is my hero because you are, this is fabulous. Um, I mean, the level of detail and the knowledge that you have uh, around this project in the marketing organization is commendable and really impressive. Um, if you wanna to go to the next slide, I'll walk through just a little bit about Alocadia and then we'll dig into kind of a fireside chat here. So, so these are what I call Alocadia's use cases and Tamir did a fabulous job of highlighting many of them. So I'm just going to quickly go through the six of them. So on the upper left, you have the reduce the complexity of marketing planning. So if you think about it initially, it's getting um, budgets and plans out of spreadsheets and PowerPoints into a SaaS-based platform like an Alocadia. The next is alignment to strategic goals. Once you have your plans and your budgets into a system, you want to make sure you're investing your time, energy, effort, resources, against the things that matter to the CMO, folks like Tamir, or to the board or to the CEO, so that there's full alignment and where marketing is putting their energy and where the company is placing their bets as well. Then it's taking control of marketing's investments. So this is when you're aligning with finance, making sure you understand where are my dollars going, what are they actually being spent on, and being able to reconcile in real time so that you can make quick decisions and have the confidence of the business of, as a whole that you're, you're good stewards of the dollars that are being given to, to marketing. I think of those top three as core foundational elements of uh, your marketing performance management approach. It's almost like a foundational data source around the I and ROI. Once you have that foundational data source set, that's when you move into uh, connecting and measuring. So the three use cases on the bottom from left to right, so create efficiency from planning to execution. You'll connect your system, your marketing performance system like Alocadia to uh, project management or work management, to campaign management systems, whether that's uh, Salesforce, whether that's uh, Marketo, whether that's, uh, again, a content mar marketing platform, so that you're reducing energy, time, and effort from your marketers in doing redundant or duplicate work so they can focus on actually doing marketing. Um, and then connecting your data for actionable insights. Tamir did a fabulous job talking about how they do that at Quadia and how you utilize it. But you want to connect the R and the I in multiple ways to get multiple views. So ultimately, you could do that final uh, use case, which is measuring and optimizing your performance. So if any of these pains are uh, familiar or if any of these are projects on your list for the next year, give us a call. We'd love to talk to you about how Alcadia can help uh, your marketing organization. So with that, Tamir, if you want to go to the next slide, we can dig into a few questions that popped up here. Um, so, so I've got a couple of good questions from the audience, but I want to kick off um, with what's the core team that you lean on when you're taking on projects like this? You started at about 11 marketers. Now you're over mm -hmm. 40. Uh, your your, your uh, acumen and knowledge of the business is amazing, but you're not a one-man show. So who, do you, who else do you lean on here to, to take this on? Yeah, so one of the first uh, people I hired uh, when I joined was a marketing operations um, person. And as you can imagine, four years ago or, or you know, back in 2014, it was still an emerging role. Um, so that was one of my first hires that I did. 
um, someone that really understood the the not just the uh, marketing automation, right, but understood the marketing stack and how s systems work together. So that that that's a person that I rely on for the marketing process and the team, right? So there's a team un under this individual that 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 helps. Um, in addition to that, I really rely on the leaders for the field marketing. So the leader for uh, the different regions, the three regions, as well as our corporate marketing leader to instill that culture and instill the, um, uh, the, the change in terms of this is how we operate at Quanti. You need to use the tools. There's a reason we have the tools. There's a reason we have a process. Um, so I really tr uh, trust the, the field marketing and the corporate marketing to, uh, to take the message to every level. Yeah, no, that's great. And I think it's important, like you've got your kind of operations lever, who, and then you've also got have to partner with the, the marketers who are leading in the field and leading with the field to make sure that they understand the importance here and can kind of carry your message uh, to everyone. So I think that that's a, those are two good points there. Um, so, so just thinking about this is actually a question from the audience and they, they kind of preface it with maybe it's a bit technical, but if it's not an Allocadia, you can't spend the money. How do you actually put that control mechanism in place? How do you- uh, Great question. Yeah, yeah how do you, how do you make that happen. Yeah, so in our very simple, right, in our CRM system, right, so we use Salesforce. Um, uh, if you want to create a campaign, you need to put the Allocadia number in the campaign. Otherwise, you cannot save the campaign. <laughs> so it's actually very simple. There you go. You, you're, it's not uncommon. Uh, well, I would say it is, it is a bit uncommon, but you're not the only one who does that. And it's a um you know i think we talked about when we were prepping for this so you've got to do there's a little bit of carrot there's a little bit of stick and finding yep. the right balance there i think that's actually like it's just kind of um even following on on that um this is it's kind of the culture like you, you push the you talked about pushing uh the culture towards learning uh, everything i love your stories about how, how everything might not work like marketing is an investment not every investment hits 300% return or whatever in the first year. But like, what's one thing you'd suggest to marketing leaders or CMOs who want similar cultures? Like, what's the first step there? So I, I think the first step is, um, it's a good question. So, so the first step I, I, would, I, would, I would say is you have to practice what you preach um, and you have to make fun of yourself sometimes in terms of just because I'm a CMO doesn't meet me perfect. In fact, I'm, I'm by far perfect. And one of my first presentations to the team, even in 2014 when I joined, is I had a slide that says, make a new mistake today. Is that I'm encouraging the team to take chances and to make decisions. Um, and you know, when I, when I introduced in January of 2015 that there's gonna be a, a significant award, an iPad for the biggest mistake of the year, Right, and we're all going to vote of who made the biggest mistake and hand out the iPad at the, our annual marketing meeting. People then say, "Wow, okay, maybe he's maybe he's right, or maybe he's true to what his words are." So, so it all starts from the top in terms of what that message is. The second thing in terms of, and I was really concerned about the Big Brother. One of the one of my concerns of bringing a tool like Allocadia in house is is the Big Brother, and this is so, very similar to what salespeople say when they bring in a CRM system, right? Everyone is really worried that there's all these systems in place to track you and to watch you and making sure you work and making sure you you know you you deliver and you make the right decisions. I promised the team that I will never ever go into it and 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 be critical, right? Or 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 look at the specific details. Um, what I say is you have to make sure it's in Alcadia. I will review it when I need to, and I'm making sure just tracking where we spend. But you are really the owner of this budget, right? And um, and you present to me on how you want to spend it. And I remember um, uh, one of the first uh, meetings in the middle of 2015 is they said, Tamir, do you want more trade shows or do you want more digital? And my response is, you tell me. You tell me. That's why we hired you, right? Um, you know, some cases, you know, trade shows or live events are better. Some cases, digital is better. But you tell me. Or what, what do you think we should do? And once, once you ask that question of what do you think we should do and you really listen as a leader to the team, Right. And and you listen to them and you challenge them and they challenge you. 
and you have that open discussion, Sam, I think it, it, it brings a totally different culture and a totally different mindset uh, within the organization. I love that. And like if I was to summarize, I'd almost say it's like you, you as a leader need to practice empathy and humility because that yes. just opens it up. Absolutely. Great. And um, you kind of talked about this just now and a couple other times and I keep going off script a little bit here, but like accountability versus empowerment. So mm -hmm. you, you talked about both of these in this presentation. We talked about it when we prepped for this. Like, tell me about the difference in those two words. Um, and then particularly when it comes to marketing performance management and measurement, et cetera. Yep. So very simple, Sam. So uh, empowerment is giving the individual the, the, the tools and support to make a decision. Accountability is presenting the results of that decision, right? So you're empowered, meaning you get to make a decision, you get to drive it, you get to own it, right? Accountability is you get to present your results. And if the results are not what you expect or results are not uh, significant to the business, right? Hopefully there was a takeaway or there was lessons learned that you could apply to future campaigns. And in terms of Allocadia and, and the process, right? Allocadia is the, the, the single source of our investment. And as I say all the time, right? In fact, I sent an email this morning. I said, it, just as long as it's an Allocadia, it's, we should move forward. Right, um, because this was a pretty major. Uh, this was a multi multi uh, year opportunity. Otherwise, I don't get involved in every single one. Right, but but this one, I said, you know, if it's an allocated go, because it is our single source of truth for how we spend our money and how we invest. And um, I don't like to use the word spend. I know sometimes I say it, right, but it's an investment. And and as marketing leaders and as marketing professionals, if we change the word spend to investment. It changes the mindset that comes from our CFO and from and from the executive team in terms of we're investing in marketing, not spending in marketing. Preach. That's amazing. <laughs> no, I totally agree. Um, I love that answer as well. I, I love all your answers to me, if you can't tell. Um, I think we have one, one last question. Um, let's see. Um, so you mentioned change. You mentioned change management. Like obviously, this project does include that change is hard but like who like what other teams did you need to align with in order to make sure that this project went forward and that it would be what is achievable obviously you talked about internal teams but like who else is involved and how do you drive through that change <laughs> um it, it wasn't easy in the beginning um so so um the first partner was our cfo because our cfo um is committed to our ERP system, major ERP system, one of the top two ERP systems in the world. Um, and at the time, Sam, he was adamant that we use that tool for budgeting. He was adamant. Um, and if it doesn't suffice, he said there's Excel, right? Um, so, uh, so, I, so it came immediate to me that I have to get his buy-in, right, into this tool and explain to him. So, so my recommendations from a change management and what does it look like. Uh, definitely partnering with finance is critical, right? Because at the end of the day, you want that closed loop process from the second you plan your 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 marketing strategy to the time you execute and you measure, right? You you have that entire process, and obviously, finance is part of that from a from a revenue presenting and from a, from an investment. The next um, uh, partner and from a change management was our IT. And our CRM team, right, with the connection with our CRM system and and um, and bringing a new tool, right? They have obviously a list of of questions, right? Is it uh, is it safe? Can we connect to it? Does it make sense? And and going through that. So from a change management, what we've done is we've created a lot of documentation internally. So we've created um, like a handbook for our employees. We created a webinar, like a like a not a webinar. Um, I'm sorry, like a tutorial, a video tutorial in terms of here's how you use Allocadia. Uh, a marketing operations team does a great job in terms of tricks, right? So I think on a quarterly basis, don't quote me on a quarterly basis, but they but they do send out tricks and tips um, for how to better use our systems, including Allocadia, uh, and and then from a change management, just from a, a culture. 
um, it was really difficult to getting the team to understand that there will be accountability and that all of our work that we do and all the programs and campaigns and investments, right? That at the end of the quarter and end of the year, you, we're going to have to present that, right? So, so, so you want to be able to have systems and processes that makes that presenting, it makes that, that, that presentation so much more better, so much more real, so much more accurate. Um, so and so much more easier, right? So you're not spending three days at the at the hotel or three days at Starbucks crunching numbers, right? With a with a single dashboard or two spreadsheets or or I'm sorry, two two reports that come out of Alcadia that you can import to a spreadsheet and just massage it a little with a pivot table. Uh, I hate hearing that, but I know that still sometimes happens. Um, uh, but but it makes it much easier to create that presentation um, for, uh, at the end of the quarter. That's great. So I think um, we've got four minutes for the top of the hour. I could probably keep talking and asking you questions for another 30 minutes, but I think we'll let people go to their next meeting. So Tamir, this is fabulous. Thank you so much for your time and partnership here. I, I learned a lot and I took a few notes here that I'm going to take back to my day-to-day -day job. Um, for everyone else on the line, we do have two more webinars coming up as part of this um, series. So the next one is with Signify and we'll be talking with a woman who actually is the one the marketing ops who implemented a project like this so really getting into the nitty-gritty across a global organization from a marketing ops marketing excellence perspective of how to how to do this across multiple hundred marketers and then we have a final one in September with Ross Graber of serious decision so very much around the theory and the frameworks when it comes to data and a data strategy so Tamir Thank you, and everyone, thanks for your time today.